G'day guys, Danny here from Red Dirt Diary. And right now, I'm standing in the bush by myself. Because why wouldn't you? Hey. Hey, mate. Nice to, nice to meet you, Danny. Nice to meet you, Ronnie. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate. Ronnie Dahl, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to another episode of Modified. We have a... We have a dirty old patrol. Stretched, dirty old patrol. Stretched, widened, weird, custom, too expensive GQ patrol. Probably one of the most custom ones I've seen, actually. Yeah, yeah, it has a bit of an identity crisis. Thinks it's a 79 series sometimes. But uh, yeah, no, she's she's fairly modified. She's, um, the only stock thing on it is the doors. The doors, that's it. The doors, that's it. It is set up to be a remote tourer and also a remote work vehicle for me as a videographer. Uh, so everything on it's pretty much built with that in mind. Um, I've kept it with a standard 2D42. It's just nice and reliable, simple, decent on fuel. Um, and then obviously the back section has been built purely to work and live out of for weeks and weeks at a time. Very nice. This is going to be a long one, guys. Strap yourselves in, pour a beer, pour a coffee. Pour a rumbo. Or a cup of tea. Mm. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Starting with the obvious, the yes. front bar. Mm -hmm. It does say ARB. Yes. But it doesn't quite look like a stock ARB, no. something going on? It's a little bit tweaked, um, and it's only tweaked really out of necessity for a couple of things I wanted to do. Um, I like the basic bar because I do a lot of touring, a lot of animal risk and things like that. I actually took out a couple on the way home from this last uh, Red Dirt episode, so I was really glad I had the big bar there. But the only modifications really have been made so I can fit the high mount in there. So I've had a few brackets and gussets and things just modified behind, cut the original um, wire rope fair lead off the front uh, just so it's a little bit cleaner and probably the thing that you never pick just looking at it is the whole bar's actually been widened uh, by about six inches to accommodate the bigger uh, bigger guards which i guess we'll get to shortly um, other than that it's had a couple of bigger aerial tabs just longer wider um, put on each side and just a little bit stronger to take the the weight of the bigger HF radio and give me a few more mounting options for aerials. Yeah, I've noticed that, you've got a big, a big plate, plate there. Yeah, and it's the same there. on the other side here. Um, yeah, it just gives me a little bit more flexibility if I just wanna move things around or if I run a sand flag. Um, I do sometimes run a 27 meg radio, um, especially if I'm on a remote property or something and the station owner's still running 27 mm -hmm. meg, um, then I'll just slip an aerial on there. But um, yeah, so it's really, it hasn't been modified for looks, it's really just been modified to to carry a couple of key things that I wanted on there. Anything going on under here? Like, is that part of the bar or is something else you put on? So, no, nah, there's a bash plate on there. That was actually, um, I would be lying if I said I remembered where that came from. Uh, it's just a four mil steel bash plate, um, radiator guard. And I've also got my oil cooler under there. So it still gets a bit of bit of airflow through the bar, but it keeps it fairly, uh, fairly well protected. I've actually landed the whole weight of the car on this bash plate before. Okay, so um, if you didn't have it, you would have smashed your oil cooler? I would have smashed my radiator, I would have smashed your oil cooler, I would have had big problems. So, okay. um, yeah, no, she's um, she's built tough, weighs a ton, but... Diff cover as well. I yeah. Mean, they're pretty big diffs already, but... Yeah, it's always just nice to, especially with car stuff, you know, you mm. hit a rock on the bad angle and punch a hole straight in it. So, I've had the Harris hard case um, diff cover on there for years. It's cop <laughs> load of abuse. It's a winch. It's a high mount. It is a high mount. It's a, it's a fairly modified high mount. Started life as a, well, I got it as a really rusted out, not working in pieces uh, worn high mount. Had it powder coated, obviously, put a lot of giggle pin internals in it. So it's running billet brake shaft, um, billet brake, gears, everything else. Rebuilt Completely it rebuilt. Like it was stripped down to every last nut and bolt. On the top, I'm running a Roadrunner off-road uh, motor, which bang for buck. Really, really good motor. Um, there's much more expensive motors out there, but I found that for my budget, that thing pulls like a freight train, does really well. Giggle pin, all bright solenoid there as well, running um, bus bars just to keep the general wiring a bit neater. How many pounds is this one? I think high mounts are technically rated, like they say they're 8,000, but they're, that's not the correct rating for them. Mm. They will pull until the bar falls off the car. <laughs> they are, um, yeah, they're pretty crazy. So I think the, the, the weight rating on a high mount's pretty much irrelevant. Like if you buy it, it'll pull whatever you want it to pull. Yeah. And they just don't stop. How much more rope can you fit on a high mount? Um, I can do a fair bit more on that one. I'm just actually running some standard rope off a low mount on there. So um, you got 35 meters on there? You, depending on the diameter, you can run 40 meters like quite comfortably. Mm. Um, 
to make life a bit easier with spooling it out because uh, high mounts are notorious for either having issues with the standard clutch or just being very, very hard to pull out. I've actually fitted this one with a giggle pin air free spool. So that just activates basically a, a dog gear inside the winch, which completely disconnects the drum from the whole gear train. So I can just grab that, just, spool it out as fast just as run want. off with it. And it's, um, it's easy, you can just reef it out. It'll spin on the drum. So okay. it's a really good thing there. Really quick for people who may not understand the difference between a high mount and a low mount winch, just give us a pros and cons top of your head. Um, speed is one of them. Simplicity in the gearing, because there's only a couple of big gears rather than lots of planetaries and things like that. That would definitely be the positives there. Um, negatives, they're big, they're heavy, um, and they draw a fair bit of power. So you really need to have a decent, like make sure your electrical system's in check, good alternator, good battery, even run two cranking batteries to power the high mount. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but they're versatile, you know, you can run them at 24 volt as well if you've got the setup for it and then they will just be lightning fast. Probably the biggest downside is uh, whether you're buying one new or you're gonna build one, it can be expensive, but you can keep it for a long, long time. Onto the side profile of the vehicle, we're still talking about bar work. Mm -hmm. So you have got the brush rail coming to the yes. back. Now this was from the original ARB? No, no, no. So these had to be uh, custom made again because of the guards. Um, of course. So the guards protrude uh, a fair bit wider. They actually add about six inches um, on the width. So obviously these had to come out to accommodate that. And then I've actually taken them into a complete custom slider slash step, mm -hmm. which keeps going until it actually kicks out under the tray there to protect my boxes. I like um, what you've done there. Yeah, I, I just figured, you know, being an alloy tray, um, it's not really the kind of thing you want to smash in and try and panel beat. So mm. if I could protect it, you know, that would obviously save me some headaches down the line. Um, and so far they've done a good job. Like I, um, I hit those quite frequently just because of how wide the tray is. Um, and obviously these do brush up against stuff again just because of how wide the car is. So if I didn't have those, I would probably have done a fair bit of damage to the, to the bodywork. And it's not stuff I can really just go and buy again. Mm. What I do like as well is you have actually got it almost to the back wheel. Yeah. You see a lot of like stuff you buy, they stop like here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There was, um, I guess it's a double-edged sword <clears throat> when you do stuff that's quite this custom you have to try a little bit harder to make other stuff work with it because obviously you can't just keep buying stuff off the shelf anymore. Like my whole front end now, if I want to buy another bull bar one day or I want to buy new rails or something, I can't just go and buy one. I need to get them made. But with that said, it lets me make sure that the car's exactly what I need it to be, mm -hmm. not just buying something and it's not quite right. But the bodywork on the vehicle, this is custom. Yep. This is from a 79, is it? Yeah, the, yeah. The it's, it's, half, it's half of a 79 series, so about... About here inwards is 79, and then there outwards is, is GQ, and they've actually been joined together. Mm. Um, rather than just putting the scoop in, we use the whole center section, because the GQ divots down the middle. Um, this is, so pretty much 79 is all there, and then GQ is the outer sections, and obviously all the back part. And the quarter panel? Quarter panels, they are 100% painstakingly handmade. Wow. On this side, they've been made to accommodate the snorkel and sort of recess the snorkel into the body whole reason for the guards was that I run GU diffs and NEG32 rims and I really didn't want to have legality issues or draw too much attention to myself having a wide front end. Mm. Um, and also flares, I just don't personally like the look of, um, of big flares. So or, or Bunnings. Or Bunnings, Bunnings <laughs> edging bunnings or stuff like edging. that. Um, I do so many Ks in this and it, because it's a work vehicle essentially, I can't afford to get pulled over and you know, harassed at the side of the road because of stuff like that. So just keeps it neat, keeps it legal. Uh, the other <laughs> thing I borrowed from a 79 was the pressurized cab. That means you can't close the doors ever when the windows are up. Oh, no. that's good. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Um, it, it's so well sealed in the cab. If you actually slam the doors and there's no windows open, it won't close because the cab's really well sealed. The only thing that's changed and the thing I get probably the most questions about are the mirrors. So these are genuine clear views, but <clears throat> clear view don't actually make mirrors for a GQ Patrol. So we had to make a, a basically a steel template and then have that template 3D printed to make a door adapter. So these are off a of GU. The mounting pattern's pretty much the same GQ to GU, but the door profile's different. So we had to make like a oh. weird three-dimensional triangular adapter mm. to fit the, fit the cleavies on, but they are the best thing I ever did for this car. 
because the standard GQ mirrors, if you've ever seen them, are just rubbish. They're like the 76 mirrors right in. They're just terrible. And especially with a two meter wide tray, I couldn't see past them. So these are probably the best thing I've ever done to this car, just for visibility and safety and parking and reversing all that sort of stuff. They're just brilliant. <laughs> This is where we have the roof rack mm -hmm. overhanging. Yep. Max tracks. Max tracks, old trusty crash pad, um, old crusty stretcher. And are we able to put more stuff up there? Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she's, um, I, I, a lot of the time I have a boat or a big kayak on there as well. So I've got the couple of racks up there and it just lets everything stay well forward of, oh, um, nice. well forward of a boat or, or kayak or anything. Yeah. Um, then if it flexes independently to your cab, it doesn't matter. It, exactly. That's the whole reason why this floats over the cab. Um, Cause obviously, mm. as you know, with a ute, you get a lot of independent yeah. movement between a tray and the body. Um, so it just stops any issues. Um, and this is, this is actually mounted. This comes through into the dog box and it goes a fair way back in, so there's heaps of bearing inside okay. there. So um, yeah, it's good. It can move just a little bit, so it doesn't crack. Heaps of loadability. I can jump up and down on that all day. Used to run the Foxwing, the original version of that. Had that for years and years and years, and then um, upgraded to the Batwing, which is pretty much self-supported. Like so, well, it, it's got all the poles and everything in it. So yeah. one of the things I didn't like about the Foxwing was just that I had to still carry a pole bag and all the other stuff, which I just, I felt it was a bit of a, a bit of a pain just to have to carry all that extra stuff. Mm. Everything to make this work is in that bag and it's all already attached. So right. find that uh, super easy. <laughs> HF radio, that's just a multi-tap aerial. So um, you normally see the big HF bases. This is just a nice, yep. simple, reliable version of those. Um, so in other words, just so people understand yep. the big one, Auto tuner does all its own thing. Yeah, it tunes itself. This one, you actually have to select the frequency you want by unplugging and going back into a tap. Yeah. Um, can be a little bit more time, but they're simple. There's nothing to really go wrong with them. Over here, I have the GM aerial, uh, and that does just mobile. So it's actually different from the standard UHF aerials. Inside, there's magic, I don't know. Um, and then that one there is the same looking aerial, but that's just UHF. So HF, mobile, UHF. How many handhelds are you running? Two handhelds in the car that are for me and the other videographer. Um, they're just on chest rigs, so we can just grab our radio, jump out and run up a hill. And then I've got a fairly big uh, GME handheld there that doubles as I can give it to another vehicle. Uh, if we've got a guest along on the so show, they can take that. Yeah, yeah, and they're beefy. It's almost as, um, almost as strong as the car unit. So yeah, all up, there are three handheld UHFs and the, uh, and the vehicle mounted XRS. Have you done anything to the headlights? Yeah, so the headlights are actually a full LED replacement. Uh, they're a Narva truck light. I had the standard headlights in here for like 10 years and they are the most dangerous thing on the face <laughs> of the earth. They're just freaking terrible. Uh, it's like having two, two candles and they're both out. So yeah, it's not good. So they, they've made a huge difference just to general drivability, safety around town. I can actually see what I'm, what I'm driving towards. Do you notice with high beam is it a lot brighter as well with high oh, it's beam? phenomenal um on a couple of couple of times where i actually where i need to dip the big lights for for oncoming um i can just keep my high my normal high beams on for a little while if it's if they're a long way away and i find that the high beam on this is fine um it, it's nowhere near that sort of scary thing you get with standard lights where you go from spotties to nothing and you mm. fear for your life so no they're really good i would um highly recommend anyone with a patrol upgrade your headlights change your life Anyone really with a vehicle pre-2018? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Start from your roof before we go to this one. Yeah, yeah. So on the roof, um, I've just got a 40 inch on there. To be honest, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cheapie I've had for a couple of years. I don't really use it too much. Um, a couple of the things I find I get with a white bonnet and a big scoop and the aerials. I get a lot of light glare coming back. Uh, you are overhanging your windscreen as well. Yeah, so I, I, um, I try to avoid using it if I can. Um, I'll use it if I'm in a really tight sort of bush area and I just want a big spread of light to find a campsite, but that one doesn't really get much use. Um, this puppy's the one that, um, that does most of my work. Combo, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's a spot spread combo, um, E-Series Rigid Industries. That's been absolutely phenomenal. I've only had that on there for uh, probably about a month now um, and just doing a big outback run it's probably the best light I've ever run. What distance are you getting? I wouldn't know what distance I'm getting. I'm getting enough that I don't need more. Like I can't see past the distance that I'm getting with this. Really like heavy kangaroo areas, I can see stuff a long way ahead. 
So that's been a great thing. I, um, I actually went from traditional spotlights. I used to have a couple of big Nava spotties up here and um, I, I wanted to get a light bar and just make sure that whatever light bar I got, it could do the same job as a mm. pair of spotties. These are the RTs. They are the RTs. So they're the hybrid tire. I spent a lot of years at one extreme or the other. So I either ran a full all-terrain or I ran a full muddy. And I always found that there were too many scenarios that for my job were just so wildly different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll be going through the outback and it's flooded. I'm like, damn, I'm on an all-terrain. Or, you know, I've got to do 3,000 k's to the Cape, half of it's bitumen. Got a bit of a hookup from my boy, Dave Carter at, uh, at Toyo. He was uh, shrieking at me very loudly to try a hybrid tire. So they'd actually just, at the time, released the RT, um, which is pretty much that hybrid. It's pretty halfway, halfway from a muddy to, to an all-terrain. And mm -hmm. so far, honestly, I, they've done everything I need to do. Okay. Um, Those got, are fairly new to the market too, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Like maybe last year? Yeah, about that. the shows they got released? Yeah, yeah. And they're good. They're, um, they're tough as nails. I find that they're a pretty heavy, pretty heavy sidewall, which is really good, obviously, for, for puncture resistance and everything. I find sometimes, um, depending on the weight of the truck and how I've got it packed, I need to go down a little bit lower than mm -hmm. I normally would in my tire pressures just to compensate for that. But that's a small price to pay for, for the strength of them. So, no, I'm really happy with them. They really sound happy. a lot like the mud thrones they do, actually. Have you, uh, had the, have you tried the M2s? Um, yeah, well, well Nick, Nick the, the other bloke on Red Dirt, has got, um, got the mud trains. You find and, um, the same PSI? Similar. We're, we're similar weight vehicles, so we okay. go about the same pressure and, and get about the same results out of them. Beadlocked rims? Yes. So the beadlocks for me are not so much because I'm a hardcore rock crawler. Um, they're just, again, like I said, there are times when I will have to drive stuff that I normally wouldn't because mm. I might need to get to the top of a hill and film it. But if I'm a little bit sketchy about it, I'll, I'll, I like knowing I can drop my tyres really far down and just buy myself a little bit of extra grip especially if I'm super heavy um, at the time. It's just a nice nice peace of mind thing as well. Without having to reseat the bead and all that. Exactly, kind of obviously never had an issue popping a bead with these things, so. Well, yeah, not with these. No, not going <laughs> Not with these on. <laughs> no. These are alloy rims. Yes. Um, they are monstrously heavy rims. What but offset are you running, do you know? They're Neg 32. They're about 22 kilos a rim, yeah. real heavy. And uh, this will add strength too, I guess. Absolutely, like yeah. Down. I'm not, I'm not concerned about buckling one ever. Mm. Suspension. Suspension is Fox Factory Race Series 2.5s, remote res all the way around. The rears are a piggyback design with the reservoir piggybacked off the shock, and the fronts are uh, uh, the reservoir sitting up on a custom mount. Any reason why they're piggybacked in here, nowhere to hang them? Or? Just, just space, and um, also there isn't a specific bolt-in option for the rear on, okay. a, on a patrol. So they, we actually had to use them. I think those ones, now I will leave this open to me being corrected, but I believe they are from a Jeep, just with some uh, changes to the eyes at the end. Like hanging over the rear, there really isn't too much weight. Because you've done the chassis extension. Because I've done the chassis extension, all the heavy stuff's in front. And it's, it's really nicely balanced. So to be honest, I don't touch the bags too often unless it's something a little bit, you know, outside of the normal. The, the only other thing I run that's a little bit different um, in the front is I run hydro bump stops and nice. custom towers as well. Uh, and again, that comes down to that like lucky last chance. If I go into a washout a little bit too fast or I don't see a rise and the car gets a bit light and comes down, it's a big heavy rig. I like knowing I've got that second damping mm. thing and also uh, as we were even speaking about last night the foxes don't have internal bumps so mm. you really need to have something there to protect the shock from yeah. from blowing out i am pretty much convinced that any heavy rig should look at hydraulic bump stops Absolutely. front and rear maybe but you got a bag in the back so yeah i guess that'll act as a second bump stop or yeah it does progress it or whatever yep is there anything we can talk about on your chassis extension while we're down here You'll see probably the big plating on the outside there. Um, so we went, we took it out 300 mil. I did consider going 450, but at that stage I was starting to run into just issues with turning circle. It was getting, yeah. it was going to be a, a real big rig at 450. You don't want to be like a 70 series. No, no, no. <laughs> just the bonnet. The bonnet will do me fine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now the 300 is really good. It's also improved the ride quality a lot um, just because it changes the geometry under the car and it changes the way that the car sort of feels when it's going over bumps. You find less rebound? Way less. It just, it just rides really, really nicely. But 
that's also got to do with the weight shift and the way yeah. that all the weight's been bought in yeah, between the axles. It's not just losing weight, it's also shifting weight. 100%. I, I, I would say that the best thing I've done to this is not just losing weight, exactly like you said, it's mm. moving it to the right place and I'll jump on the freeway, I'll punch out a 12 hour day comfortably. Like it's a nice car to drive now. So the old 79 series bonnet, eh? Mm -hmm. I know why you got it. Why is that? Because if you do this, see? That's, uh, that's did you know that? No, no, I, I did. Um, I mean, I know, I know that uh, Toyota parts have a habit of flying off, so <laughs> I guess that's why it happens oh, like that. <laughs> snap. <laughs> oh, dang. Here we go. Yeah. So big old 2D42. She's um, pretty much the, the basic engine, actually, with this one uh, is a GU factory turbo motor. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a little bit tickled from there, as you can see. Custom airbox, custom... Yeah, so starting basically from the intake, uh, goes mill weld snorkel into a radius fab four inch airbox which runs a Commodore panel filter, just mm -hmm. heaps easier to get in the middle of nowhere. Um, into a JP Performance 18G large, uh, which is pushing out about 28 PSI roughly. From there, we go up the front through a Plasma Man Pro Series 2000 horsepower intercooler, I wish. Um, and then back in through a Plasma Man billet intake um, into the stock internal motor. Um, so if you know TDs, 20, 27, 30 pound, it's nothing for a TD. Um, so it's, motors handles that really, really nicely. It's got a very, very healthy tune in it. Fuel is coming off a JP 12 mil, but it, it's clean as anything. I've tried a few different setups with it and I found some of them were um, snappier response, but they just poured soot out the side and I really I really didn't like that at all. Got a nice, clean, big power setup. It makes 230 horsepower at the rear wheels on 35s and just shy of 800 Newton meters. Yeah, wow. she boogies. Yeah, I felt it when we drove here. Yeah, it's, it's got it, some go on it. It's got some pull, yeah. Was it hard to get all this in? No, look, the good thing about TDs is if you stick with pretty standard um, tried and tested parts like your you know, 16s and 18Gs and you know, stuff that's been, been done before, um, there, there's space for everything. So I found the front mount was a massive improvement over the top mount. Um, just in terms of, of keeping it cool and, and keeping EGTs down. Uh, she's a real cool running motor too. Uh, it's got a um, Harrop radiator up the front. Honestly struggle to get it hot. Okay. So very lucky in that respect. So I think you can either be lucky or unlucky with these things. And um, I seem to have struck 2D42 gold with this one. It's a beautiful motor. Probably should rewind for a second because this used to be an EFI petrol mm -hmm. in here. So what the EFI petrol had, it actually had bigger front brakes on the EFI petrol version. So I've managed to, I've, I've scored that throughout the years. So that's handy. Um, but yeah, hydro booster would be nice. Just give a bit more bite, a bit more pedophil. Um, basically under here, that, that's about it. There's not, there's not too much done to the motor. Um, it's got a billet flywheel and a, a NPC Viper clutch behind the motor. Motor, gearbox, transfer, diffs are all GU, uh, late model GU. Tail shafts, everything. The tail shafts custom because of the stretch. Oh, of course. Now time to reveal. Yes. The, the main part. The big show. So, uh, this is my living side. Uh, so everything on this side is basically where I camp. My swag rolls out basically right there. And everything I need to, even in the canopy and everything itself, all my stuff that I need to just live and cook and all that sort of stuff uh, is on this side. Uh, and work is pretty much on the other side. So I've got the, um, got the 45 litre angle there. Uh, clear view drop slide, uh, just makes life a little bit easier for the uh, shorter members of the crew. Is that um, the combi? Hey, no, that's just the single, that's just the fridge, uh, fridge, free, fridge or freezer. I've always had angles, they've always worked for me. I've got a couple of real old ones. I don't know if it's actually that they're the best or I've just always been lucky with them, but I like it, it's, um, we'll probably just keep running it unless... Um, oh, it's one of those things you can't go wrong with, I think. I think it's just pretty much, it's like the rest of the truck, it's just simple, reliable and just does what it's supposed to do. Red Arc 12 volt system in there. So it's all, it, that, that's a DIY power panel. Um, mm -hmm. It's honestly, it's, uh, I didn't build it to be pretty. I just literally bolted a sheet of ply up there, put what I needed on it and does the job. Charges a full camera crew, uh, worth of gear all the time, every day. We've got a 1225 
uh, BC DC, yeah, the DC to DC charger there. And what size is that inverter? We've got the 1,000 thousand watt red arc inverter up the back, uh, which is pretty much gets the most use out of everything. Fuse panel? Yeah, fuse panel in there, um, some additional 12 volt sockets, um, and I've got up here the BM1 battery monitor. So what I really like about that battery monitor is that it will tell me how much time I've got left, as well as what's coming in and out at the time. So I can turn my fridge on and see, oh, my, cool, my fridge is drawing two amps. Or I can turn the, the travel buddy on, I can see how much that's drawing and, and you know ration my power out a little better that way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, really simple system, not like the most expensive 12 volt system at all, but just really- Works for you. Really reliable, what you need. it just works. Yeah, and I got some solar inputs there as well for, for the panels. Yeah. Do you use as much? Now and again, um, to be honest, it's one of those things I bought and I don't use as much as, as I thought, thought I would on. use. You know, I'm doing a big drive home and I'll stop in at a servo at five o'clock in the morning. I'll grab a little thing of party pies, just the frozen ones, and I'll go, I'm not hungry now. I'll just have breakfast in a couple of hours. Screw it. I'll throw a few in there now. Dings. Cool. Done. I've, done, I've probably done that, honestly, five times. Good unit. I probably just wouldn't buy one again because I haven't used it as much as I thought I would. Very slowly paying for itself. Very, very slowly. <laughs> one party pie at a time, yeah. So to complement the living area and the fridge and everything in there, um, this is probably my favorite part of the truck. And okay. this is the best part of doing the chassis extension um, for me is that most people have trundle drawers in the back. They come out under the tray. Um, I've got mine, two of them, one on this side, one on the other side. So all... Oh, nice. All my living, all my cooking um, stuff is in here. So pantry, everything else. Mm. Um, That's kind of thinking outside the box because most people throw all dirty gear and stuff yep. underneath the tray. Yep. That's, just, that's how I think about it too. Mm -hmm. But you've actually I've, combined I've, them with the whole... Absolutely. And, and the whole thought process behind doing it this way is that the whole time I was designing this, I was thinking weight forward and weight low. So this is weight forward and this is weight low. Mm. Um, and the, the same drawer on the other side is exactly the same. Um, and it's got all my tools and that's a very heavy drawer. So, and not only that, this is all lightweight too. Everything I keep, because I, um, I'm a, I'm, I've got a background in a lot of fishing, hunting, backpacking, hiking, kayaking. So I've always had that mentality in my head of keep it light, keep it small and keep mm -hmm. it functional. Um, so yeah, little stuff like this. It is amazing the amount of stuff I can actually get in that. I've got food, I've got a full kitchen basically set up in there and I've even got my camp chair and a table. Which one's the table? Uh, that one is the table. Okay. That's a camp chair, full size. Um, and it just, yeah, goes in the drawer. Nice. Sorted, packs away. So, oh, yeah, there's a few. Uh, that's for anyone that's snoring around the camp, yeah. <laughs> don't snore when you're around Danny. No, don't, don't do it. Sorry, just looking at things that interest me. No, please, by all <laughs> means. Around the edges of the box, I've got a little bit of dead space. Um, so I just put little stuff in there like, you know, tent peg hammer and some cable ties and spare tent pegs and got all my sand pegs and stuff in there. Just try and make use of every little... Awesome. Every little corner. That's um, pretty smart, aren't you? Like, so you've made, you've deliberately made the drawer up a bit. Yeah, yeah. So I had, um, just so I had, so had the little tuck-ins. I love having just stuff space. Um, mm. You know, like I can jam radio, like the other side of the box, all that there, I've got hoses and belts, just just jammed in. Like I don't need them every day. So yeah. they can just get jammed in, making use of those little, little extra areas that you normally ignore. Well, when you think about it, what you've actually done is most people that do a draw system like this, there's dead space underneath. Yep. Every build I've done until now has dead space underneath. Yep. But if you make the dead space bigger, you can use it, it and that's what you've being, done. It stops being dead space. I really and like that idea. useful. So, yeah. yeah, it's always just handy. I find, you know, just be able to throw something in there. You can't quite find a place for it. Just jam it in. Keeps the rest of the, um, rest of the setup a little bit neater. Nice. So yeah, that's, uh, so this, this is probably my favorite, favorite bit of the truck. This okay. is the bit that gets all the use. What have we got here? So to complement the cooking side of things, I wanted to have a dedicated area. So as we said, I've got the fridge, I've got the cooking equipment, um, and then in here, built into the actual uh -huh. bearers, is a nice cook surface there. So um, awesome. Yeah, it's on draw slides. It's it's weather sealed, so it does stop. Still get a little bit of dust in, but that's bull dust for you. But yeah, pretty much keeps it clean, keeps it tidy, gives me somewhere to like if I'm fishing, you know, I can I can. 
do whatever I'm doing here, even if I'm if I'm backing up footage, just stick my laptop on here and do what I need to do. And, and of you course, got shelter. I got shelter. Um, I got lights under there, so and of, and lights in the canopy as well. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I can pretty much just do whatever I need to do. And that's your kitchen here, so. Exactly, exactly. Awesome, what's in there? <laughs> uh, in there, I, um, a lot of people have asked me why I didn't go for an alloy canopy with the alloy tray. And the simple reason is, I really like canvas. Mm. It's that simple. I really like the look of half canvas and half alloy. Save on weight as well. Save on weight, price was a factor as well. I'd already spent a fair bit of money building the tray and I didn't want to spend even more putting a canopy on. And I, and I like canvas. In here is pretty tray back setup, like it's pretty standard tray back. Um, got the two full spares um, tucked up against the headboard here. Oh, so there's another one over there. There's another one just on the other <clears throat> side. Um, I, like I said, I've got a pack for every kind of occasion. So I might just be going away for a weekend. I might be going away for a month. So I like having two spares at all times. Then everything else I've done storage wise, I've done it out of Pelican cases. Um, reason for that is being a canvas canopy, the ceiling will never be perfect. No. You're always gonna get some dust in. You're always gonna get maybe a little bit of water in, in if you're driving into rain for ages. So I just like knowing that there's that second weatherproofing in all the Pelican cases. Stuff like that just makes it easier to pack. You know, I've got my external solar panel just there. Um, crash mat, which is really good when someone's car breaks and you can just use it as a ground mat as well as as well as a all uh, that honestly that probably gets the most use just when we need to get under a car check something mm. check the car over in the morning and just throw it under the car and um and hop in there set up so i can sleep in it so i won't do the whole thing but you get the idea yeah got the fly mesh that comes down zips up um, hooks down to these and if i'm if i'm not planning to camp i usually leave my swag at home like if i'm just oh probably be a day shoot or something mm. i won't take all my camping gear then if I'll, it blows out then if it blows out i'll just chuck something i'll take a little little air mattress or something to throw it in the back at least i've got somewhere to sleep yeah. and i didn't have to pack a whole suite of camping gear and the swag and everything and the last thing because i'm a mad keen fisher probably can't see it you might have to get that in another shot but i keep all my fishing oh, rods yeah. um tucked up the top of the canopy there very nice um corrugation proof got a little fan and i've got a little holder for my tablet so i can lie in the back there and watch netflix <laughs> <laughs> other side yeah so the tray's built as a mirror basically so everything that's on that side is the exact same configuration on this side it's just different stuff basically that i store in it but that's a dog box that's a dog box so that's the only difference is that um this one's built for the pups so again you can just roll that and um when the dogs aren't in there that's full camera storage so you got a gas heater too. Yeah, got a gas water, gas shower in there. How much water are you carrying? I carry, I've got 60 litres in a tank. You won't see it because it's actually tucked above the fuel tank. It's a custom fuel tank. And the fuel tank's recessed in the top to hold the water tank. Huh. So it's just, again, using every little bit of space mm. possible. Um, so the, the water tank in there is 60 litres and I usually carry uh, two jerry cans of water um, and a big drum as well, just for dirty water or, or whatever, just for general, you know, whatever you might need, creek water or something like that. You can just scoop it up in a bucket, basically. Right, put your fires out, etc. Et exactly, just, you know, you don't need clean water. My shower head in there. Now, usually that's got a little bit more stuff in there, but for this last trip we did in the outback, because of the amount of Ks and the corrugations and everything, I just, I moved a lot of the weight forward. So I took some stuff out of there. Usually I've got um, oil and like, two stroke for the chainsaw and chainsaw fuel and stuff in there. And in the other box on the other side, so this mirror, just got my pots and pans and billy and fire lighters and bug spray and oh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. typical round camp sort of stuff. They're good, they, they seal pretty damn well. A bit of it, yeah. We can probably just throw that over the top. Is, is that a toilet or a fishing bucket? <laughs> or both? That does, that is a multi-use item. So that is my thunder bucket. I'm very, very fond of my thunder bucket because uh, you can take it up a mountain into a really nice view and uh, have your morning up there. To start with, I always carry a pair of jerry cans, just because if you obviously you, if you crack a main tank, and I've got 170 litres in my main tank, if I lose all that, at least I've still got enough to maybe get me to a town or something mm -hmm. like that. So that gives me pretty much the best part of you know, 200, 210 odd litres um, all up. Over here, I've just got a little fold out table for prepping camera gear or something. I usually just get the table out and set everything up on mm. that. Behind that though. I got the front runner. Yeah, Pop yeah, point. I am such a fan of that body thing. That thing's awesome. Um, 
So got my crab pots and everything there. Um, and then yeah, the front runner barbecue plate on the wheel there. And then this here, fairly long length of hose and a inline filter on that hose as well. Ah. Now what I can do with that, I can set my pump up to run into a creek. I'll filter the water just enough and then I can backfill my tank, my water tank under the car. So uh, even if I do run short on water or I get to some fresh water or something like that, just refill my water, fill up that drum or something like that, fill a jerry, uh, whatever. So Perfect. I just like having that sort of nearby. I like what you've done to your table here too. <laughs> so you can put camp put, ovens and put stuff Put hot on. stuff on there, exactly, yeah. Uh, don't ask me how many um, tables I melted before I worked that one out. But yeah, that's actually, all done that. that's actually a real estate sign. <laughs> if you look on the other side of it, I think it's a good ad for Ray White. Um, yeah, and then uh, maybe, yeah, you can probably see the, the fishing rod holder and stuff uh -huh. a little bit better up there and a little tablet holder for, for Netflix. No chill, just Netflix. All right, extinguisher. You got Safety one first. in the cab as well? I uh, got one in the cab, one in the back, uh, and a knife there. Uh, the reason for the knife, I'll always, wherever I'm sleeping, I've always got a knife with me. Reason being, I know a couple of people, uh, one girl in particular, that um, she was in a swag at night with a kid and um, some embers blew over from the, from the campfire and actually set fire to the swag. And she got out, but trying to get to the zipper and everything. So I've always just had that mentality, wherever I sleep, if I'm, if I'm anywhere camping, I'm like knowing that, cut the bloody canvas open and get out if something like that happens. So yeah. um, that's why there'll always be a knife sort of somewhere and there's always one in my swag, just. Yeah, I'm the same. I always sleep with my knife yeah. in yeah. the swag, yeah. even, even in a rooftop tent. And fire, wild mm. dogs. Mine, mine actually came from uh, being paranoid that I was going to wake up busting for, for a piss. Yeah. And I couldn't find the zippers in the dark. <laughs> you just cut so it open. just like, cut it open. <laughs> or, or your mate cable ties it. <laughs> that's a, that, yeah, yeah, that's a. Because when I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not waiting <laughs> for anyone. We all know corrugations are just the killer of everything. Mm -hmm. So what I've done with the tray floor is I've put this. Um, you mounted the heck out of it. Yeah, I've just put put this this foam mat in, and then I've put a rubber mat on top of that, and it just vibration damps a lot of what's in the tray. So if I've got camera boxes or anything in here, mm. um, I find I'm not things just don't randomly stop working now. Like yeah. just you're not hearing vibrations. in the cab either. Exactly, you're not hearing you know things banging against the floor of the tray. I thought about putting drawers in and all that sort of stuff, but you can unbolt your frame. Yes, I can. You can unbolt here. I can take the whole thing there, off. Yeah. And it just becomes one and box flat tray. Exactly right. Um, oh, well, there's still with drop sides. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, I can right. take the drop sides off and run it dead flat. Um, nice. Because I, a lot of the time, I like to put a tri uh, quad bike in the back. Obviously, nice. that's what the ramps are for. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I can just take the whole thing off. I'm going to run the quad for this whole trip. Sweet. I'll spend a spend morning, take the canopy off, um, and she's back to being nice. flat tray. Uh, GQU79. Yes, yes, this is where the uh, the magic happens, I guess you could call it magic. This oh. is where the rattling and the crying and the screaming happens while <laughs> driving along. Almost looks like the DeLorean. It's um, on the cross here. It's a little bit mental. Everything that's in here, though, is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, the, even the stubby coolers across the dashboard, they're literally there to cut glare off my bonnet when I'm driving west. Um, everything in here, yeah, it's, um, he's <laughs> back onto the knives. <laughs> yeah, I told you, you'll find one everywhere. They're just absolutely everywhere. Yeah, there's one on the gear <laughs> stick. Yep, yep. There used to be a big boy hanging off that one, but it scared a few people. But, um, nah, she's pretty, pretty, uh, functional, to be honest. Like, it's a mess, but, like, overhead here is the best thing I ever put in the car. Um, like, just little stuff, I stuff my gloves in there, I got... Mm. Pictures of my dogs up there. <laughs> um, and uh, spare straps. I've got the, um, not the, I call this the safety grenade. I've got the EPIRB um, just tucked up there. What is it? It's an AccuSat, a GME AccuSat. That's the, uh, everything has gone to hell. Oh, it looks like a breathalyzer. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> when you first pull it out. Oh, if it was, I wouldn't be pulling it out. 50 channel GPS receiver. Yeah. Okay. So that's when it all goes to poo. Um, never had to use it, touch wood. Mm. So that's the land EPIRBS yeah. equivalent. Yep, that's right. I'm ne I never ever want to use that, but it's there if I have to. And then like other safety-wise, I've got, um, got my sat phone just jammed in the back there. So that's always there, ready to go. Use okay. that. That gets used a fair bit, actually. Um, 
Actually, that got used on this last trip when I um, blew my pan heart out and I had to make a call and try and get parts in the middle of nowhere to work out which way I was driving. Fair enough. Um, yeah, other than that, like it's all it's all pretty standard stuff. So I've got, um, I've got a 27 megahertz uh, GME up there. Um, oh, that's the 27. That's the 27 meg. So for anyone that's not 100% familiar with that is that's different to UHF. It's a very old technology. Um, a lot of people, no one really uses it anymore, um, except for the occasional stations use them, yeah. um, occasional properties here and there. Um, and if I'm if I'm out on a property, if I'm shooting there, uh, as if I'm filming there, or if I'm just out there for recreational reasons or whatever, um, you know, I can call the homestead and get a bit of contact there. Um, got the XRS there, so that's I've actually just recently put that in the car. Um, that's cool. So everything's on the handset. Everything's on the handset. It's um it's oh, super loud, which magnet. is awesome. Yeah, and magnetic that base is awesome. Yes, that is like if you've ever fumbled around with like the old clip type ones. Yep. That that is so good, and there's all the funky stuff you can do with that as well. Like you can replay, like if you miss a message, you can just replay the message, and you can see where your mates are on GPS with it. That's this is really really. Oh really? Yeah, it's crazy cool. How can you see where they are? So you can sync that to your mobile phone. Mobile phone sits in my cradle oh, there. But you have to have uh, reception though. Ah uh, no, no, it's Bluetooth to the thing. So you can just have the iPhone sitting in there with the oh, GME yeah. app open. But but does it need reception the phone? No. Or it just gets like satellite. It gets it's all off satellite. It's really cool because if Dan or triangulates with radios. Yeah, and GPS and it does its magic stuff and tells you where okay. they are. Because we were just driving back now and. I noticed every time Dan was in the Ranger and he'd radio me, even on the radio, it comes up um, RDD Dan, because that's what we said his username at, um, 1.5 kilometers west. Oh, wow. Because he's behind me, and I'm like, oh, cool, I can see where he is, like where he's radioing me from. That's awesome. Yeah, it um, makes it easy to find a campsite too. Like, if I go for a scout and I find a campsite, um, I can just radio Dan, cool, he can see exactly where I am, nice. come to the campsite. So, um, other than that, like, a lot of the stuff in here is for my work. Um, so I've got a inverter just attached to the dash there, which- you Charge camera gear. Keep little stuff whatever. on charge. Um, you know, not the big batteries and, and whatnot, but just the little mm. camera batteries and, and mics and stuff. Um, got a couple of hand, the handhelds I was talking about before. So I've got them on a little harness here. Like a sling? Yeah, just a sling. Just so if I'm running up a hill, I can carry some like lens filters and my notepad and stuff in there. And that's just really handy. Like if I need to call a convoy of cars through. Um, really cool. anyway, Matt, you got to get one. Honestly, get one of those slings. Yeah. They are. I'm going to be uh, noting down some here. Well, yes. I'll be, actually, I can just watch it while I'm editing. Oh, you could actually watch this, yeah. Keep an eye out on your own channel for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Ronnie, when you edit this, yeah. write, write some notes down. Yeah, still some ideas. Um, <laughs> um, all my switch gear and everything down here. I've got um, front and rear lockers there. Um, got the big dual motor ARB compressor that's behind are they my air lockers seat. Or are they they're E lockers, lockers, so they're the oh. Harrop E lockers. Um, they were, they, they've been flawless so far. And I kind of like that if I tear a line, I'm really just tearing a wire. Mm. And I can just yeah. you know, twist them back together and she's all good. Um, winch controls are here. So I got my winch there. Um, that's the air free spool switch. Um, so I can hit that and just release the clutch on the winch. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my rear lights um, and my spotties or my light bar just up on the dash there. Okay. Everything I've seen so far has been flawlessly designed. Mm -hmm. Is there an isolation switch for your, for your winch? Uh, no. Okay. No. Um, I isolate it if I'm parked up. I actually just take one of the wires. I've got a, a, a wire that I unclip off the solenoid on the winch itself, oh, okay. which kills the winch. Yep. Um, so the, the reason I've done that is I have some isolation switches here and there, and I, and I did find it might have been my crappy job. I just found that occasionally the switch had stuff out. Uh, yeah. Um, and if the switch stuffed out, I couldn't reconnect it mm. so i just have it with a physical plug um and if i'm ever in an area where i'm a little bit concerned about leaving the car i just pop the winch off the battery terminal yeah. under the bonnet um fair enough and this is your <coughs> hf radio that's the hf so they're notoriously expensive typically um so i didn't have the money to spend on a brand new um mm. hf unit um so what i actually did was i went through hf radio australia and they sell refurbished older units. Um, a lot of them are ex-Telstra. Um, ex-Telstra is, as you know, probably a gold mine for comms equipment and yeah. general four-wheel drive stuff because they, they turn over their fleets and they sell a lot of it. So that's a refurbished um, Barrett um, 250, which is a very old unit, um, but essentially works exactly the same as a modern unit, just doesn't look as fancy. But mm. 
it's like a third of the price. But you would have saved a lot of money with that antenna as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, like that antenna is like 400 bucks, yeah. not 2,000. Do you find you get interference on any of the frequencies? Um, so I'm usually sitting on 8022, which is the standard VKS frequency. Um, I do find, depending where I am, if there's a lot of electrical, if there's an electrical tower somewhere in the distance, I might get it. Um, it's also different if the car's running or not. Um, so I've routed a lot of my main electrics over to this side of the car mm -hmm. so that that side's just running an uninterrupted HF cable. Okay. So it keeps, yes. uh, it tries to isolate it as best I can. Um, but I actually, one of the things I really like about the HF, and I don't use it for comms too much, like occasionally I'll jump onto the VKS um, scheduled broadcasts and just get an idea of what the weather is. But I actually like being able to switch over to just ABC radio. Yeah, that, that's it. Like, you can get it anywhere. E exactly. I can be <clears throat> in the middle of nowhere, and if I'm on my own and I haven't, you know, no human contact for a little while, it's mm. nice to put the radio on, hear some voices, catch up on the news, yeah. basic stuff like that. Rear camera. Yes. Which so I absolutely love the idea of that. I'm going to do that in my vehicle. Yep. Because once you put stuff in the back, you can't see the back anyway. Nothing. So That runs 24-7. Perfect. Yeah. So that's just on with ignition. Hardwired? Um, uh, it's actually a wireless camera. Okay. Do you find... With the wireless, it interferes with certain frequencies on a UHF. No, no, I am actually really surprised because that is a very cheap reverse camera. Okay. Like it's just like a really budget JCAR one, and I really didn't expect it. Because you know where I'm going with this, right? You've, you've, you've experienced that with other people's cars. They pull up next to you, yeah, and yeah. the radio just turns to crap. I haven't had that. Have you? No, I haven't okay. had that. Um, I've had it with a few people, and it's their reverse cameras. Really? Yeah. yeah, no, I haven't had that. Like I was saying, I, I'm amazed. This thing for a cheapie has been so good. Like I run that 24 seven, as I said, I expected it to crap the bed in a couple of weeks, just running all okay. the time. Um, and yeah, so far it's, it's still good. If I have to replace it, I will go with a wide unit though. Oh yeah. I will yeah, have it hard full hardwired um, <clears throat> just because I do find sometimes you get a bit of an intermittent um, dropout Okay, Sometimes. Maybe, maybe something's throwing a signal, disrupting it. Exactly, it could be you know half a dozen yeah. things, but um, no, that's, that's worked really well, and, and I get to retain my rear vision, so that's yeah. handy. So it's a bit of a collage of collection of stuff along the dash, and yeah. then we come to your pillar pods. Yes. You've got three of them. Yep. I'm guessing one of those water temp because it's a TD42. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't really move much. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. And then the other one will be the EGT. So I've got a combination red arc gauge that is boost and EGT mm -hmm. in one. And then I've got water temp and oil pressure as one. And then down the bottom there, I have just dual volt uh, nice. volt gauge for, so for the, the cranking six stuff. Six gauges. Yeah, six gauges, but they're condensed into three. Um, Hang on. Where's your second battery? We get, oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's all under the tray. Ah, so how many batteries are in the back? Uh, normally two, so I run one fixed under the tray. I run a Baintech power top as a next one because okay. I like being able to pull it out of the car and yep. um, take it to power a camera or something. Mm -hmm. um, and there's usually two under the bonnet. The main one in the corner there, and I had an ARB battery tray up in the corner, but I found it was a really small battery tray, okay. and I could only put a real small crappy battery in it and I like being able to join my two it's batteries. Parallel, it's, yeah, it's not going to fill the other battery up if it's charging that one. Yeah, yeah. All, all that stuff. You I just, I kept losing part. that one. I just kept, it, I kept killing it. Um, and also running the winch on 24 volt, I want two of the same uh, battery. Yes. So um, I'm making a new battery tray to take a full size battery in that corner now. So I've had to relocate some stuff to do it, but essentially that's it. And this is probably the one that gets a heap of questions is this MDT. Mm -hmm. system up on the dash there um that is i'm actually going to throw some thanks to um steve at automotive excellence for hooking me up with that because that is the craziest thing this is a mechanically injected diesel just old school straight out simple that thing gives me three different tunes on the fly nice so i've got a really low power tune at 150 then i've got a mid tune at about 180 and then i just hit the button again and i go to 230. okay so, and it gives me boost readout, EGT readout, because um, I always like having, like, with essential stuff, like temperature and EGT, I like having two gauges. Your two reference points. Exactly. Um, if one starts going a little bit wobbly, at least you've got, you know, mm. okay, one of them's going, one of them's doing something stupid, and you can pull over and check it out. Yeah. Um, so that's a really cool thing there. And then, probably the only other thing, I've just got another another handheld um, on the steering wheel that I just usually sit on the truck channels with. Oh, and it stays there? Yeah, it just stays there. I just usually sit on like channel 40 if I'm heading out west and I keep my convoy on the main unit and I can just radio a truck to overtake or 
stuff like that. Yeah, um, cool. That's the beauty of not having airbags and you got a custom steering wheel. You can yep. you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm I'm all about just tucking stuff away. You know, yeah, I can see that. Trinkets and crap absolutely everywhere. Everything's but, um, at arm's reach. Everything's at arm's reach, even you know, head torches on the headdress mm. and it's all about just being comfortable where you are and everything's at arm's reach. <laughs> Cheers mate. Cheers mate. First question. Fire away. Why the GQU79? Yeah, um, look, the biggest thing I found when I was really starting to look at my wagon and wonder what the next step was going to be, is I looked at a lot of the stuff on the market. I looked at 79s. I looked at a late model GU, uh, coil cab GU, straight out of the box. And I just found that with that, none of them fit the bill just right. And I already had a really good platform. And I figured that the money I was going to spend building a whole nother car, starting from fresh, I could put into this and I could literally turn it into exactly the car that I wanted, it, down to the smallest details. Like, I'm not a short guy, I'm six foot three. A GQ single cab is tiny. The cabs mm. are notoriously terrible. So this one, even little stuff, it's about 200 mil longer than a standard cab, just so it fits me in it comfortably. Um, I literally set my seat where I wanted it, and we cut it around that. Yeah, so right. it's just the little details that make it my my perfect car. You know, I punch out 10,000 Ks easily, comfortably, and I know every nut and bolt in the car. I'll just tell you right now, a 79 series, six foot three, you probably wouldn't like it. You'd be sitting too high. Yeah. And ha half your vision will be ceiling. Yep, <laughs> yep. It's just okay for me, any taller? Mm -hmm. No. No good, yeah. No, look, it's just, um, it doesn't look it from the outside because the big old patrol, it is a legitimately comfortable car to drive. Mm. Yeah, for me. It looks unique as well. It's different. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to see another one. No, you won't see another one like this. So, I mean, unless someone else is entirely insane and does the same stuff, in which case I feel sorry for them as well. And 3D scans your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 3D <laughs> scans the car and, and goes again. But um, every time I get in it, I'm driving all of my own history. You know, every trip I've done, all my career, this car has evolved as my career's evolved mm. um, and as my lifestyle's evolved and the history's all over it. You, you saw all the stuff inside, you know, yep. every place I've been, it's in there and uh, it's a, it's a, it feels like home. It is home. How long you had it for? 10 years. And it was a wagon when you had it? It was a Stop. red over gold. A red? Red over gold, petrol, automatic. It's funny, a lot of people on Instagram, people that have been following me for a long time, they occasionally will, will come back across my page and go, oh, why'd you sell the original one? I'm like, mate, I didn't sell it. This is it. This is the same car. <laughs> I think I would be asking the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing <laughs> the same. Like, but it still feels the same to me. The three best mods you've done to this vehicle for yourself. Like, mm -hmm. they're like, yes, I'm so glad I did this, this and this. Yep. Um, the extra horsepower. Just because of the weight, it drives like a car now. I can, I can sit at 110 k an hour all day, every day. It's comfortable. It runs cool. It, it doesn't blow smoke. Um, it's made it a lot more car-like to drive. And that is really good when you're punching out big Ks. Like, mm -hmm. It's fine to drive a mm -hmm. truck on the weekend, but if you're doing big miles and you want that comfort, so the power has been fantastic. As I touched on briefly, the, the clear views, um, just because of the sheer width of the tray, it's 2050 wide, and there is not a chance my standard ones could see through it. So having the huge, huge mirrors there just makes it again a lot more comfortable drive. And probably the third thing would be finally settling on the, like finding the right tire, mm. finally, after ages of, of cutting back and forth between all terrains and muddies. Um, and again, that comes down to... So you found your happy medium. Absolutely. It comes down to like just the comfort and just making those big drives nice and it still does everything I need it to do. So I'd say tyres, power, mirrors. I know out of everything else, it seems like small yeah. things. I'm could, surprised that, you know, I thought yeah. one would be the chassis extension and maybe all the, yeah. Those things are great, um, but you only notice those things when you're out of the car. And you, okay. you know, the tray's great, and I love the tray, but I only notice that when I'm camping. Mm. Those other things are every minute a that constant, I'm constant, always yeah. behind the wheel. Um, yeah, they're the things that make me the, the most comfortable to have there. The worst thing about your rig, the worst one thing. Um, standard patrol suspension geometry. 
is these things are, doesn't matter how much money you spend on suspension or tuning them on these, the really sharp ruts, um, big corrugations, it's an old truck, it will rattle, it's noisy. Mm -hmm. I've done my best to sort of quieten it down. Um, I've actually put a muffler back in it <clears throat> just recently, um, quietened down the turbo a little bit as well by plumbing the screamer pipe back in. <laughs> yes, it had a screamer, screamer pipe. pipe. Um, and I've dynamated the cab. But the, probably the hardest thing to deal with on a daily basis is just, uh, not on a daily basis, sorry, when you're off-road and you're doing high-speed dirt, it's just a noise. But honestly, it's just one of those things. It's um, There's so many good points to the car that, the sort of NVH levels don't really bother me too much. Like mm. if I wanted super quiet, go and buy a dual cab, but I've made my choice and that's all right. I suppose the in sort of in line with that, it's probably just the size of it. It does make it hard sometimes on super tight tracks just because of the width of the tray. Yeah. You've just got to be careful. Yeah, that's it. Everything else, I feel like I've weeded the problems out pretty well. Be a nice car to follow for me. To fo <laughs> Everything's pushed out of the way. You'd stay well out of the dust and you'd stay out of the roost. Put it that way. Well, you wouldn't stay out of the dust, but you'd stay out of the roost. So we covered the worst thing. Mm -hmm. What is the best thing? This is going to sound super romantic, but the best thing about this car for me is the history in it. It's the fact that, yes, it's unique. It is very unique, but the fact that it's still the same car that I bought when I was in my early 20s, 10 years ago, and every time I get in it, I'm reliving every trip I've ever done, every place I've ever been. This thing's been just about everywhere. And it's, it's the best thing is I've kept that. I haven't, I haven't um, had to start again with another vehicle. It's, like, it's mm. like having my whole home with me. And that's why I've set it up like that. I spend so many months of a year out in the bush that this thing really does feel like home. And, and that's the best part of it is that everything I want is here. There's a lot of history with this vehicle with mm. you, 10 years, as we have covered a couple of times now. Yeah. What is the most memorable trip in this vehicle? Location and just a short description why. It's a tough one. It's 10 years. It's oh, 10 that's years. a toughie. It's probably a trip I did a couple of years ago um, where I did a big run out around the Simpson. Um, I was by myself. It was just a solo trip. And I built it across the Simo and then I actually did sort of big loop down and under the Simpson and did like a bit of a sort of outback pub thing by myself. And I really feel like on that trip, like it was just, it was very liberating being in it. It was just, um, I got to know the car really, really well. It was one of the bigger trips I'd done solo. And um, yeah, it was just, just one of those real special memorable ones. So yeah, Red Center, um, was up through the NT. Um, down through South Oz, back down through New South Wales and back home. Yeah, it's hard to pick them though. There's so many. It's always hard to pick them. Bloody oath. Now let's talk about your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. uh, which you co-run with Dan. Yeah, yep. So RDD, Red Dirt Diary. Red Dirt Diary, yeah. Also known as Red Dirt 4x4. Red Dirt 4x4 on Insta and uh, Red Dirt Diary as the, the show itself on YouTube. Cool. So this vehicle was hit and miss last season. Yeah, because a lot of the work was still being done. Okay, that's Last why. year, yeah. Uh, but this season, it's going to be in there a lot. You're going to see it, uh, unless I break it, unless I do something really stupid to it. Um, <laughs> it's booked in for pretty much every episode this year, so it's going to put some big Ks under it, um, which is good. I'm, I'm legitimately looking forward to being in it. I was in a lot of um, other cars last year. I was in some weird stuff, you know, Unimogs and um, a couple of Jeeps and uh, in Dan's Ranger a fair bit. And um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to being in my car this year and put some big Ks under it and have some fun with it. Nice. Nice. What's the plans for this season this year? And how many seasons are there? I mean, how, how, many, how many parts of the series are there? So it's, it's going to be, so it's monthly. It's always been monthly. Um, we're up to... All up, year? Yeah, all year, um, every month. So we had a bit of a hiatus just to get some things finished with cars and just general housekeeping duties, I guess, before we kicked off. Because once we, once we start for a season, it's, it's no stopping. full on. Like, you yeah. know it. It's just go, go, go. It never stops. So... Mm. Uh, we had a little break. We're back now. So it's every single month um, there'll be episodes out. And that's um, pretty much going to be running for 12 months from this one that's coming up shortly. How many seasons? Well, this is season two and well, we've got no plans to stop. So they're just going to go more and more. Uh, we really want to, this season, 
a lot of people have seen the big locations. You you, you watch stuff like um, you know you watch your forward auto actions, um, you watch your channel, you see yours, and, and you see you know the big locations. We've all seen Cape York and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the things we really wanted to do, and we got a lot of feedback on it last year, was people are aching to see the smaller locations, the ones that are maybe a little bit more budget friendly as well. Um, they're more achievable in terms of what vehicle you need. So we listened to a lot of that and we took it to heart and we said, look, as much as we'd like to go up the Cape, as much as we'd like to go and cross the Madigan or something this year, uh, really at the end of the day, we only exist because of the people that watch us. We owe everything that we have to the people that watch us. And if they're asking for something, well, that's yeah. what we're going to do. So you'll see <clears> a lot more. That's the beauty about YouTube. Absolutely. You it's it's being able to communicate directly. Like, mm. hey, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you like to see? So we're going to try and do a lot more stuff that anyone can do. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a, a fully built vehicle or you've got a relatively stocker with, with some good tyres on it. There's going to be something in there that you can watch our episode. You can take some notes and you can go and do it. Yeah. You know. So we're really going to try and push on that this year. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, you want to see more about this vehicle, watch the series coming up, Red Dirt Diary, Red Dirt 4x4. It's going to be a uh, Let's, uh, well, thanks for... Mate. Thanks for your hospitality. You've had a big Absolutely. night last night. That's yeah, why we... we're a little bit... If we seem flat, we're a little bit flat no, last night. No, I've just been wearing sunnies <coughs> all day for no yeah. reason. I've been up and down. Well, there is a flecky right in their face, too. No, that's a bit bright. <laughs> I, think, I think the guy behind the flecky has died several hours ago. Yeah, poor um, Dan. He was he was laying under it before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, always good fun. Nice to uh, nice to catch up and, you know. For sure. And we'll see you in a, about a m month or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sydney show. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Hell yeah. Get everyone together. That'll be, um, yeah. Content creator stage, you're up there. This may be out before or after that, but yeah. anyway, they're, they're, they're happening all through the country this year. Yeah, this uh, the big rig will be there anyway, so any questions people have, they're more than welcome to ask me about the truck, have a look at it. You can subscribe to Red Dirt Diary just here, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, well, you can do so here as well. There's another video down here with another uh, patrol. I'm not sure if it'll be a GQ, GU, but it's down there. Check it out. And see you guys next time. Cheers. Cheers, man.